Hmm, whatever did happen to the roast of Beauty and the Beast? Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. Yes, the Andy Signor of Screen Junkies. If you're seeing me for the first time in a few years and you're like, wait a second, aren't you the... No, I'm not. In fact, Screen Junkies wants to erase me from everything. But if you want the full side of the story, if you want my side of things, if you would like an update, please click on up here and you can actually get informed because the channel that I helped build and, you know, created a lot for, they just want to erase me from all their wikis since now they own the wikis. <laughs> so I'm trying my best to get my name back out there to remind you that I'm still here uh, and I'm doing my own content here on Popcorn Planet. In fact, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button uh, and follow me or just follow me on social media at Andy Signor. Now, look, yes, the roast. This is a question a lot of people ask. What happened to them? They were on Screen Junkies Plus. Where did they go? <gasps> what? Do I have a copy right here? I do. And I wanted to do a little bit of an introduction before I play it. All right, now look, there's going to be some chapters below. If you'd like to skip this introduction, you can. You can go to the beginning. You can go to the next person. In fact, I implore you, if you're not having fun with one, hey, just click on to the next. Because the reality is, they're not all perfect. And that's why I wanted to give you a little bit of an update before you watch. But if you're like, Andy, I just want to watch the roast, go ahead. You can click ahead to the next chapter and you can watch the roast. Uh, now, I want to go through this because before I play it, I want to tell you why I'm sharing this. I'm sharing this because I don't know what happened to it. I don't know why this isn't online. It sure feels like nobody has the rights anymore, doesn't know. I don't know if it got lost in a limbo, but it's not fair that this content's not up. Really proud of this and so many of the other roasts. And I notice there are roasts online that nobody's given a flying thing about. Uh, you can go find some of the other roasts. But this was the only one that I figured was not online. So I happened to find one online and thought, you know what, let's make sure it's here. If somebody has a problem with this, you can reach out to me directly and I'll happily update it or remove it or private, whatever I got to do. In the meanwhile, I just feel like this should be out there for everyone to watch. This was a really fantastic uh, piece that we did and so many amazing performers and crew members were involved. And I want to take a moment to thank all of them. And I want to also explain a little bit about what was going on here because I also am frustrated because I love that these wikis, these wikis up here that are now owned by Screen Junkies have Joe Starr as the authority on everything that went wrong and with Screen Junkies and everything else. So I, I'm going to comment there because I would like to explain some things. But before I do all that, this roast particular was filled with so many amazing performers that I want to just give a quick shout out to. Our Beauty and Our Beast were so amazing. Belle was portrayed by Allison Becker, amazing actress. You may have seen her in Parks and Rec and a bunch of other stuff. She was so funny. And Our Beast was Barrick Hardly. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, go check him out. So talented. You've probably seen him in a ton of commercials and stuff but he does some amazing art builds and stuff. Go show Barrick some love over on his YouTube channel. But they weren't the only two. No, the other one I really want to call out is Dick Masterson, Dax, whatever you know him as. He played our Gaston and he was so damn funny. Doing Gaston was funny because we were allowed to be as gross, racist, whatever we wanted to do. Gaston was a character that could say those things. And so we had so much fun writing for Gaston and uh, Dick put it, threw it out of the, the water without a doubt. Uh, there were some other ones though I wanted to call out though as well. Allison Hayslip as Snow White was hilarious. Sierra Catow as Mulan was one of my favorites as well. Make sure you don't miss her set. As well as Andrew Pivko as Walt Disney. The two of them are hilarious. Also, the credits at the end are wrong. That's actually Courtney Miller from Smosh as our Ariel, who was great. And Zan Alda's Jack Sparrow was so fantastic. There are so many other people that I want to shout out and thank for this project. Our writers, led by Keith Carey, who actually had written for a lot of the roasts, along with Spencer, did such a fantastic job, along with Gina and Gilly, Julia Prescott. They did so many funny jokes that, and worked with our comedians to make this all funny. And I got to give a shout out to our amazing production team, uh, Brent Lydeck, who produced these roasts uh, with no money. And that's where I got to pause here because I have a bone to pick with Mr. Joe Starr, who's been out there talking smack about the production team. And I can't stand when writers who have no no idea what they're talking about behind the scenes with the production and the people above production come out there and try to pretend like they know what was actually going on. So I, I want to correct that for the record. And I also want to thank a few more people, but let me pause here since it came up. Joe stars out on Reddit and this is sort of a record going out there in B2B. So I want to correct things. So he says here, look, I'm not speaking for anyone other than me. I'm a very much move forward person when it comes to things like this. Sure sounds like it when you're writing one of these. Uh, I'm proud of the roast. Our wardrobe department crushed it. They, they in fact did. Our performers knocked it out of the park. They did. That's true. And our tiny writing staff wrote an insane amount of really good stand-up material in a shockingly short amount of time. Super proud of that. You should be. They, they did a great job. They all got paid. Your salary, Joe, was part of our budget. All of our salaries were part of the budget, like it or not. That's part of the budget that put screen junkies over the edge and why we weren't 
becoming profitable because we were spending so much on this stuff and not making it back. That's how business works. Uh, I was always very frustrated by everything else around that. Just speaking candidly about the creative process, the sets look bad, venues and audience were poorly planned. One time they rented a 200 seat theater and invited 20 fans who did their damnedest to sound like 200 and the direction made it seem like they had no director. It was insanely frustrating how a crack comedy team on the ground and folks that didn't get how to make comedy work in the tower. So look, he's taking a knock at me is really what he's doing there because I was the director and that's fine. I, I can take shots at my direction because I wasn't really directing, but, but, but I want to pause on that for a second. This whole idea of buying extras, just a little quick behind the scenes on this roast and everything else. The reality is you can hire background, but that doesn't mean they're going to get the jokes. And we, Brent, production team and I, we all, str even Spencer, I mean, we all struggled with the fact of talking about that behind the scenes of, do we really want to pay a bunch of people who aren't going to understand these crazy, you know, uh, jokes we were telling, these Disney jokes, uh, because they were more niche. We were going through and talking about, sure, you could argue, well, everybody knows Disney, but they don't always know it all. We were doing more movie-based deep cuts at a lot of times that if you hire them, it's going to sound fake or they're just not going to laugh. And then we've wasted money on extras that aren't going to show up. The reality is it also makes it complicated when you do these sort of shows, paying those extras costs a lot of money and we tried to pay them. They didn't show up. What we did know is that if we had our fans come in, they would laugh the hardest. So we were trying our best to get as many fans as we could. And a lot of fans, you know, RSVP'd, but then didn't show up. And a lot of people we were offering to pay also didn't show up because we were shooting these in the middle of the day in Hollywood. And that's, you know, there are way bigger talk shows that hand out free passes all over to try and get their audiences filled. And they sometimes have a tough time. So who's going to come to us versus it's such a harder challenge than than anybody Joe understands and so when you when you knock the production and you say that then the sets look bad you take a shot at mark who built amazing sets i just it really upsets me and i want to be here to defend the crew and everybody involved not just the performers uh, and the writers who also did a fantastic job but in order to give them that venue to do the comedy there was a lot behind the scenes that that needed to come in place and the extras as frustrating as i agree they were at times we had a 200 seat venue because we had to put we had, a lot of it we had to put cameras in and block a lot of the viewpoints and we couldn't fill up all the all the seats and we couldn't afford Board. even the 200 uh, seat venue was a lot more expensive and because we rented that more expensive theater we lost budget on our extras and you can't just get unlimited budget on things sometimes you got to actually work with what you're given now that's a fair argument but that wasn't production's fault why didn't we have enough money the reality is we weren't making any money <laughs> if we really look at it screen Dickies plus was a wash and we were spending a lot on this show the other insight about the production is we would shoot two of these back to back so there was a lot more going on behind the scenes now getting back to the direction of why it was such a my direction i'm not proud of my direction either i, I basically let the crew do their job and i was in there to sort of chime in make sure things were making us in the booth laugh making the audience laugh we were trying our best to make sure the machine was moving but we were on a very tight time crunch we had two of these to go through we had a bunch of extras to go through and we had to sort of do it live we couldn't do 10 takes and try to make everything funny because we wanted to put the joke out there if the joke didn't hit to the audience we had well then we were sort of out of luck we didn't really have time to break it down like other things do. All right, let's try these jokes. Uh, but some of the jokes didn't hit, Joe. Some of them didn't. Uh, and the reality was we, not every, not a whole hour's worth got guffaw laughs is what's the reality of what happened. We tried our best to work with what we had. Having a bigger audience wouldn't have necessarily fixed the lack of laughs is what would also annoys me. Um, that said, there were some really big laughs. There were some great performances. But overall, I got to give major props to the crew and everybody involved because I really think it's unfair. I just didn't like seeing things like this out there taking shots at me and everybody else when there was a lot more to it. The reality is, look, a lot of the stuff we made was cheap because we weren't given high enough budgets. But on these roasts, this was a higher budget than we were used to. And our production team, led by Brent, Warren, Joanna, they busted their ass to make that work with, with the limitations that we had. Um, and uh, look, the writing was great. Great, but the production got us those amazing wardrobe. E.B. Brooks, who Brent and I had worked with, uh, became friends with, she was amazing. Her team, Buckle and everybody, did such an incredible job with all the wardrobe. And we got to talk about Cheyenne, who did the makeup. Her team had to do not just makeup, but makeup and hair for all those people in such a limited amount of time. Uh, and none of them were getting paid more than, they, they should have been all getting paid more. Everybody been, should have gotten paid more in this show. But we had to keep everything tighter. Everything adds up and creates a budget that you have. And when you go over budget, then you get in trouble. Uh, and that wasn't ever my the budgets weren't my decision and I'm so sick of that being out there like I didn't want to pay people on movie fights of course I would have I wasn't allowed to 
I wasn't the person in charge of the company. I couldn't make those decisions. I did ask for it a lot and I was always denied. And you can only ask so many times before people think you're annoying and don't want you to keep asking. So I did what I could do the best of my abilities. So I want to clear the air on that because it, it annoys me. I, I imagine some of you can understand where I'm coming from. Uh, and, and also, I, I don't agree with him. I think the production was great. I think Mark uh, and his, his production design team did a fantastic job with the sets, knowing how hard it was, how much of a limited time. There was one problem with the sets where they sort of, something did mess up, but it was it was what it was. We had to work with the production problems, uh, but I think everybody did the best they could do. Uh, our DP, Matthias, and his crew, all of our camera operators, getting that slider to sort of give some movement to make it seem like we had a crane in there, which we couldn't afford. All that stuff was incredible. Uh, Randy Whitlock, our editor, did such an amazing job along with the post team to get that done and, and sweeten a little bit of the laughter. We didn't want to try and make it fake. Some of the, the, the lack of laughs, I just it's genuine is what it was. Sometimes you'd add more fake laugh, but we thought that was even worse. We wanted to sort of just leave it the way it was. Uh, so I, I got to thank all of the production team, everybody involved, the performers, all did such an amazing job uh, that I want to make sure you guys knew what was going in. So yeah, again, it's not perfect. There's a lot of this roast that doesn't necessarily hit as best as it could. And that's on the writing, Joe. Uh, everybody had faults in this. We didn't make a perfect production. I agree with them. It's not streaming worthy. It's not as pro professional as I wish it could have been. But for what we had access to from a budget standpoint and everything else, and the fact that we had to do two of these in a day with all the writing team, I, I applaud everybody involved because we pulled off the impossible on these. So look, I, some of you aren't going to laugh. Some of you are. If you don't like one uh, bit, if you don't like one performer, that's why I added chapters. Just skip ahead to the next one. Hopefully you'll find somebody you enjoy. I had a blast with this one. I think it was so much fun. So many amazing performers. And the other thing I want to end on is I can't tell you how many of these performers would always come up and say, oh my God, please invite me to the next one. This was so fun. What an amazing experience. Uh, please do these again. I loved it. Uh, so I'm so grateful to have this back up so all the performers, all the production can have this for you guys to see. So without further ado, I present to you the roast of Beauty and the Beast. And if you haven't already and you made it this far, why not subscribe to Popcorn Planet? Hit that subscribe. Hit that bell for alerts smash that like button and leave a comment as you watch of who was your favorite performer. I want to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. A tale as old as time, a song as old as rhyme, and a movie past its prime. It's the roast of Beauty and the Beast. Starring Ariel, Jack Sparrow, Mulan, Peter Pan, Aladdin, Snow White, and Walt Disney. Now be our guest and give it up for your roast master, Gaston. I'm Gaston, daring adventurer, a cunning hunter, and the only man in France who can do a push-up. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be your roast master tonight. It's, uh, it's really great to be here, actually. I'm feeling especially great because I just had my way with those three slutty bartender waitresses with the huge cleave. Yeah, you know the ones I'm talking about. Everybody knows the ones I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't worry, I took good care of them, because everybody knows no one fucks like Gaston, pelvic thrusts like Gaston, goes for 45 seconds and nuts like Gaston. <laughs> yeah, 45 seconds. It's because I'm uh, dashing, strong, and efficient. Look, I know they all had orgasms because they told me they did, and we all know that women aren't smart enough to lie. Oh. <laughs> all right, now enough foreplay. I never much cared for it. Let's bring out tonight's honorees, two people I'd like to mount on the wall of my house for very different reasons. Please be my guest, and welcome to the stage, Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> now 
Now then, Bell, uh, Beast, it appears you're relevant again thanks to Hermione, 4chan's favorite jack-off material. <laughs> so congratulations on becoming the latest Disney classic to be remade as a live-action movie. Yeah, you know, it's big, it's big, it's big. It's only been given to The Jungle Book and uh, Cinderella and Maleficent and Alice in Wonderland and Pete's Dragon and 17 other properties in development that I'm probably not gonna go see, but hey, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> now, some people might say they're ripping something off, just calling it a new idea. Uh, I just call it pulling a Walt Disney. Wow. <laughs> That's me. Look, we're a hot property right now. And uh, Screen Junkies decided it's time to hang on and cash in, like Aladdin's pubic lice. <laughs> Hi there, Al. Yeah, I see you. Aladdin famously asked, uh, do you trust me? And the answer is no, because you're a thief and a liar and a brown. <laughs> hey, uh, Al, dress like a real man, why don't you? Like me, in a form-fitting dress with a high-waisted belt, come on! You look ridiculous, that little vest uh, showed off your lack of nipples and your abundant chest hair, I don't remember that. Where did that, did you, you how many wishes did you use on that? <laughs> Did Robin Williams leave you that in his will? <laughs> Let's also welcome the Little Mermaid. Hey, here's someone who would do anything to get married. She got a great exchange rate, though. One voice for two holes. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, man, I want to break those in. All right, hey, Ariel. <laughs> You'd make a perfect wife. That's all, that's what I'm saying. You'd make a perfect wife. Uh, you don't speak. You, you can't read. You never wear shoes, I don't think. You got a rich dad. You don't understand human sexuality. My God, you're my perfect woman. <laughs> Belle, you can learn a thing or two from this one. It's called looks, not books. <laughs> That's what I always say. That's a Gaston original. Here's another one. It's called blowjobs, not, n not knowledge. <laughs> Just as good. Just as clever. All right, Snow White is here, too. Uh, Hi-ho. Hi-ho. <laughs> yeah, all right, you get that. Look, I'm not saying Snow White is dumb, but... She trusted an ugly stranger who offered her smoking fruit. <laughs> Take a page from Bell and judge a book by its cover once in a while. She's, it's why I didn't invite the gal from the princess and the frog. She just seems shifty. <laughs> hey, someday your prince will come, but for his sake, I hope it's in your mouth. <laughs> because... You damaged goods. You damaged. She she spent so much time sharing a bed with seven midgets. Who? Excuse me. Let me use the PC term. Sharing a bed with seven garden gnomes. <laughs> P.S. I heard your prince sing. Uh, let's just say that poison apples aren't the only fruits you should be worried about. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, uh, Peter Pan is here. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. Boy, you are small. I've deuced pieces of corn bigger than you, Peter Pan. Forty years old and you're still waiting for puberty to kick in? Oh my God, your balls are dropping slower than the beast's flower petals. <laughs> Peter Pan steals pretty young girls from their homes, takes them off to an island where everyone stays below the age of consent forever. Why didn't I think of that? It's brilliant. Look, you got the perfect setup, and Tinkerbell is so much more mobile than a white van with no windows. You go for it, kid. You live in the dream. You live in the dream. <laughs> Jack Sparrow is here, too, doing his Hunter S. Thompson impression. Yeah. Yo ho, yo ho, Jack. I can't pass this sobriety test standing still. You're maybe the worst pirate I've ever heard of. You barely murder anyone. You don't rape at all. In fact, the only... <laughs> the only thing you've plundered is a Salvation Army under the sea. 
Are you sure you're not from Beast Castle? You look like you're a hamper full of dirty clothes came to life. <laughs> Give it up for Walt Disney. Hey. Walt Disney. Yeah. Lots changed since the 60s, Walt. Uh, but a lot stayed the same. For example, still, no one gives a shit about Epcot Center. <laughs> Look, Mulan is here. Uh, she had the nerve not to bring any orange chicken with her. <laughs> hey, here's a fortune for you. No tip for you, lady. How about that? Uh, Mulan pretended to be a boy named Ping, ran away from home to, to fight in a war. Yeah, incredible, incredible. It's the farthest an Asian girl has ever gone to get out of violin practice. <laughs> Sir, ma'am, little boy, whatever bathroom you're using these days, you're great, you're great. And uh, I'm sure you'll make some awkward white guy a very happy man-child someday. <laughs> You can get into arguments about how many Gundam figures is too much. It's one. It's one. Finally, there's Beauty and the Beast. Belle. Oh, Belle, 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 my darling, yes. Belle. Belle, you're so uptight, I would uh, need the same battering ram I used to take down the castle gates to bust open your hymen. No offense. <laughs> Probably need the same number of angry villagers, too. What are they there for? You don't know. Here's what really gets my goat about this. You're developing feelings for this, this beast guy, but he's a, mo he's a monster. It's crazy. He's basically the same as me. He's spoiled, selfish, and mean. I'm all that. Plus, I'm buff. I mean, come on. Call me the portrait in Beast Castle, because I'm ripped. All right, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. But remember, the beast is mine. Let's get this roast started. <laughs> Up first is a serial liar whose only friends are a monkey, a rug, and a blue slave. Show some pity for Aladdin. Oh, thanks, Gaston. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Aladdin. Well, some people call me Aladdin. Others call me Prince Ali. Gaston mostly calls me Isis. <laughs> Fucking French peasant. <laughs> um, it's great to be here tonight, though, among so many catty white chicks. You're probably all just mad because I out-princessed all of y'all, okay? I mean, I ate nothing but bread and camel shit my whole life, and now I own a tiger like a Persian coke dealer. <laughs> Started from the bottom, now we're here. Prince Ali. <laughs> Snow White is here. Snow White, wake up, woman! Wake up! <laughs> Why do you always look like you just hot-knifed a whole bunch of opium? I don't know. Snow White is sad, though. Yeah, Snow White is sad because she didn't get along with her stepmom. Oh, that's rough. I'm homeless in a country with Sharia law, okay? So maybe whistle while you work on checking that privilege, bitch. <laughs> Ariel is here. Hmm, Ariel, oh, Ariel, girl, I know you wish for legs, but you should have wished away the top half of your body and just gone full-blown fish. Because this isn't working. <laughs> Oh, oh, too soon from her fish transformation? I don't get it. Um, you, you don't, you don't want to know what we do up here, Ariel. Have you looked up the word sushi yet? No? Oh, that means you probably ate Flounder's parents. <laughs> too bad. Well, take it from me, guys. I'm like the master of wishes, right? People always get on my case for using my last wish to free the genie, but you know what's cooler than using up your wishes? Having a genie owe you one. That's long-term wishing, bitches. <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> uh, plus, now everyone thinks I'm the nice guy. Boom. <laughs> I'm so messy. I love it. Um, Walt Disney is here. Hey, Walt. I wrote a little song for you. You want to hear it? Okay. Who's the theme park guy who's into white supremacy? 
Y O U A R E A C U N T. You're a cunt, Walt. <laughs> Walt is so racist. He thinks I'm Moana. <laughs> you know, Walt. It's it's too bad you wouldn't work with Jews, Walt. Or somebody would have told you that Epcot Center was a horrible investment. <laughs> And speaking of diminishing returns, Jack Sparrow, how are you still a thing? Ugh. You're based on Keith Richards, right? Which is perfect because you won't fucking die. Also, your dick looks like a Thanksgiving leftover sandwich. You know, I've never met a human bongo solo before. <laughs> Mulan is here. Mulan. Oh, the second most famous crossdresser Eddie Murphy ever rolled with. Oh. <laughs> But, you know, gay, straight, or questioning, whatever you are, I'm sure you'll make Woody Allen very happy someday. <laughs> oh, um, oh a, a young Asian girl with no opinions of her own. Perfect. <clears throat> oh, well, oh, too soon, ye? <laughs> um, speaking of which, Peter Pan, you're like a hundred years old. Just stop everything you're doing. Don't try to pull this Edward Cullen age is nothing but a number Neverland shit on me, you fucking pervert. I went to Neverland in the 90s, okay? And you grow up fast when someone leaves you alone with Michael Jackson. <laughs> Finally, Beauty. Hi, Beauty. Hi, the Beast. Hello. Ah, Beast. You look like a buffalo trying to sneak into Downton Abbey. <laughs> You look like Captain Crunch if he got bit by a werewolf. You look like Michael Vick fucking the dogs. You look like Osama bin Laden training to be a French maitre d'. You look like Cousin It in a Princess Leia costume party. You look like a high school production of Mr. Mistopheles. You look like the devil fucked a bunch of his hair in a shower drain and gave birth. <laughs> you, that's enough. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to say, though, I am so happy you two found each other. That's special, you know? It's so wonderful that you've built a relationship on a solid, deep foundation of kidnapping. All right, seriously, girl, wake up. You get twirled around in a fancy ballroom a couple times and you forget that he threw you in a cage? Fun fact, Beauty and the Beast lost the Oscar for Best Picture to Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it's the same fucking movie. <laughs> it puts the lotion on the basket, Belle. Don't get distracted because the basket is alive and trying to sing, okay? <laughs> I mean, this dude is a monster, and you're going to end up as a part of a lampshade. Not in a magic way, just in a literal, he cut up your skin and turned it into a lampshade. Run, bitch! <laughs> All right, whatever. I'm done trying to educate these hoes. I got to run. All right. Uh, me and Jasmine are planning a second wedding because our first one got blown up by a drone. Yay. Um... But congratulations on your big night, and always remember what Aladdin taught you, okay? It's not about how much money you make. It's about being able to look the person you don't really love right in their eye and lie right into their panties. Later, bitches. Up next is one of my favorite gals in the world. She's hot, she's sleepy, and... That's about it. Please welcome Snow White. Oh, hello there. <laughs> it's an honor to be here tonight with people from all around the whole small world. Aladdin is from Agrabah, Mulan is from China, and I'm from somewhere? <laughs> the forest, I think? Um... I'm from wherever my husband says I am. <laughs> We're in love. <laughs> oh, Gaston. <laughs> and I thought my prince was charming. Talking to a woman before you kiss her? How modern of you, sir. <laughs> uh, you know what tickles me? 
Your only competition for Belle was a monster who almost killed her dad, and she still picked him over you. <laughs> Even Dopey says you're a cuck. <laughs> oh, Aladdin. <laughs> Thank you for taking a break from spending Jasmine's money to be here. <laughs> Sneezy tells me you have a flying carpet, but you're on something called a no-fly list? Hmm. Your Agraba culture certainly is backwards. Women don't fall in love. They're told by a man that they're in love. <laughs> oh, and Peter Pan, he's just like the old lady who fed me that poison apple. Secretly a queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, Peter. You've had shots with Wendy, Tinkerbell, and Tiger Lily, but you seem to prefer to wrestle with little boys for eternity. You're not fooling anyone, Peter. We all know how Thudbutt got his nickname. I can only imagine what Marbles had to do to earn his. Oh. Oh. Hey, Ariel. You are trying much too hard to land your prince. There's no need for adventure. Just lie very still, and a prince will inform you that he's the man of your dreams. <laughs> oh, you're so lucky you don't have to speak. Prince Charming would never scream at me to shut up so much if I couldn't speak in the first place. <laughs> oh, Jack Sparrow. Hi, sailor. <laughs> I confuse Jack with Captain Hook sometimes, but Bashful gave me a way to remember. Hook is a pirate with one good hand. Jack is a pirate with one good movie. <laughs> I have animals around me all the time because all living creatures love me. Jack Sparrow has animals around him all the time because they can smell when something's about to die. <laughs> oh, Mulan! <laughs> I loved watching your quest to dress up like a man and save China, or as I call it, Moo Paul's Dragon Race. <laughs> I also hate Mulan because I used to be the most diverse. You know, brunette. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Mr. Disney, so good to see you again. You're the only man besides my husband who insists I call him daddy. <laughs> Thank you so much for creating a world where women are free to marry the first man that picks them. It leaves us time to focus on real women's issues, which dress to wear and which animal to nuzzle. <laughs> 2017 is a scary world, but when I'm around you, I feel alt-right. <laughs> Belle and the Beast. Oh, it is so good to see you. I thought I loved animals more than anybody in the land, but I stand disgustingly corrected. <laughs> Congratulations on your marriage to a horny St. Bernard. <laughs> oh, Beast was such an awful prince, no one in any other castle, in any other land, noticed he'd been missing for 10 years. But Belle, don't pretend you had no idea how to break Beast's curse. You sang a song about the book that told you he was Prince Charming, and you didn't help him until the end of the movie. Chapter four probably told you how to escape the cellar. Chapter six would have told you to get your tongue out of the teacup because that's a little boy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I should go soon. You've all poked fun at me for not having any agency, but I'm off to take a nap in my castle while Prince Charming and seven slaves do all my work. <laughs> Although Grumpy did invite me to help the dwarves with their mining, he wants me to go work on something called the Glory Hole. I bet it's a cave full of rubies and sunshine and... I'm just kidding, I know it's dicks. <laughs> Remember to whistle while you work, and that work is for men, just like goals and decision making. Good night, everybody. Great advice. <laughs> the next man, the next man to this stage is, has beads and dreads, and I'm only talking about his pubes. Please welcome Jack Sparrow.
Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain. Thank you, Gaston. Legend tells that you eat five dozen eggs in the morning. That's, that's too many eggs, mate. That's way too many eggs. But ahoy there! You know why they call me Sparrow? It's not because of the tattoo. It's because I'll peck a bird seed out of your pussy for breakfast. <laughs> also, I bathe in a tiny fountain. I'm just kidding, I don't bathe. But let's parlay! Woo! Ariel is here. You probably all are wondering, would I have sex with a mermaid? Well, I would, and I have. <laughs> Best sex in my life, mate. I'm addicted. I've stuck me peg leg in manatees just to chase the rush. <laughs> Word of advice, though, never 69 in our war. <laughs> yeah, that was a long night. But you, love, you take the cake. It's not just because you're 16, it's that smell. You smell like the dumpster behind ye old red lobster, and I can't get enough. And speaking of your cheddar biscuits, it's better down where it's wetter, especially when you smell like me pube dreads. And me balls are so swampy, there's witches in there bringing Jeffrey Rush back to life. <laughs> and old Peter Pan is here. I know a friend of yours, actually, Captain Hook. Captain Hook, good man. Lazy name. It'd be like if my name were Captain AIDS. <laughs> Just, you could try a little harder, you know? But Petey, let me know when you're ready to give up the pixie dust for pure, uncut, happy thoughts. I've got a barrel full of opium to unload, and that shit will send you past the second start of the ride and straight on till morning. <laughs> you ain't lived until you've chased the dragon, especially if it's voiced by Eddie Murphy. Isn't that right, Mulan? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Mulan! Ping. Whatever. <laughs> Let's get down to business. I actually don't have much to say about you. You're, uh, you're about as forgettable as the fourth parts of the Caribbean movie. Aww. That's right, there was a fourth one. And we're making a fifth, get over it. It's gonna be great. To be honest, I don't even remember what that last one was about. I think I saved Christmas or something. <laughs> anyway, though. The point is, I'm just crazy for a girl dressed up like a boy, though. Kira Knightley did it, Zoe Saldana, Penelope Cruz, Orlando Bloom. <laughs> mm, Orlando Bloom. Smooth as a dolphin's labia, that one. <laughs> Mr. Walt Disney, I'd like to buy you a drink. You're the only person who could turn a bunch of rape-happy parts into a slow-moving boat ride. <laughs> Pirates rape people, Walt. And now kids sing that It's a Pirate's Life for Me song about how great it is to rape. <laughs> but this isn't the first time Uncle Walt turned adult topics into G-rated rides. Splash Mountain? Slavery. Mm, it's true. It's a small world? Child slavery. <laughs> Haunted Mansion? Housing bubble, actually. <laughs> and Aladdin, hello, mate. You know, if you and Jasmine ever need a third, call me. Hell, invite the whole gang, the monkey, the carpet, the Aflac duck. <laughs> but we've got a lot in common, you and me, mate. We're both one jump ahead of the breadline, one swing ahead of the sword, and we both fingered a monkey. <laughs> Snow White's here. Doesn't she look amazing? Let me tell you, whatever Aztec gold you stole to get that body, I want that curse. Just kidding, it's anorexia. <laughs> I know an eating disorder when I see one. I, too, was once a skeleton. <laughs> Snow White, it's not just your skin tone, love, though. It's just your personality, your sentient milk, mate. Plain vanilla. You're the most bland woman I've ever met, and I hang out with Kira Knightley. <laughs> well, there's not a lot I wouldn't do, in fact. The only thing I wouldn't bang is an animal. Which brings us to Belle. Darling, I would get yourself checked. I'm 90% certain his unwashed red rocker gave you a beast infection. <laughs> but beast, I do feel you. Curses, they're the worst, aren't they? A curse turned my crew into skeletons and your crew into pottery barn. <laughs> I have a lot to ask, though, about the living furniture, mate. Are they all alive? Like, does winding Cogsworth turn him on? Have you ever literally munched a rug? And who is your toilet? Are you just pissing in your butler's mouth? He probably wants to kill himself, eh? 
I would pay all the golden tortuga to watch a toilet try to kill himself. <laughs> I'm feeling rather good about all this. I think we've all arrived at a special place, eh? Spiritually, comically, biblically. Now, quickly, everyone to the orgy! Black pearl necklaces all around! Woo! You know what the, uh, the teachers from Charlie Brown would sound like if they're British? That guy right there. All right, our next roaster accomplished a lot in her life. She brought honor to her family. She fought in a war, and she's my favorite Pornhub category. Please welcome Mulan. Thanks, Gaston. I've always appreciated your muscles. Uh, and especially how they make you look like an upside-down triangle. <laughs> Got him. Uh, you're, you're always welcome to come out to the Great Wall and join our fight against the Hunts. Uh, you'd be the only white guy there. <laughs> Except for Matt Damon. He's there for some reason. What? <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here uh, and also be the one person here to represent all of China. <laughs> Yeah, the studio actually wanted to send a more recognizable Asian actress, um, but Scarlett Johansson was busy. <laughs> She's, yeah, she is. She's uh, filming Joy Luck Club, so wait for that <laughs> in 2018. All right, if you, uh, if you didn't know who I am, uh, I am Mulan, star of Disney's most progressive uh, and therefore least successful animated movie. Perfect. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I scored Disney a lot of firsts, actually. Uh, first animated war movie, first drag characters, um, oh, and first American movie uh, to have Asian actors play most of the Asian roles. What? <laughs> That's insane, right? Suck it, Kung Fu Panda, you piece of shit. <laughs> Anyway, though, I've got to give Disney props, though. You know, we pandered to Chinese audiences way before it was cool. <laughs> right? Uh, Peter Pan is here. Hey, Peter. Yeah, and he has got to stop calling me Tiger Lily. <laughs> Jesus, bitch isn't even Asian. Come on. Uh, yeah, no, Peter and I actually both, um, how do I say this, pretended to be men. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, amazing, yeah, but um, Peter, no amount of musical numbers is going to make a man out of you, okay? <laughs> Let's get that straight, yeah. Anyway, uh, then there's also Aladdin, hello. Uh, Al and I actually were bonding backstage uh, because we both invented an alter ego to get what we want, right? Yeah, there's no right Prince Ali, yeah. Uh, sorry, there's a little bit of a difference, though. I, uh, I did it to save my people, <laughs> and uh, he did it to get laid. So noble. So noble, Prince. Yeah. By the way, um, Jasmine is, like, so out of your league, okay? Yeah, the only pussy you have a chance with is fucking that tiger. <laughs> yeah, Jack Sparrow is here. Why is Jack a, a sex symbol? You know, like... He, you look like the smog over Beijing, but on a hat. <laughs> and that, <laughs> you called it a day, right? Yeah, Jack's got so many warts, his dick looks like a thousand Huns running down a mountainside. <laughs> yeah, I would know, right? I've seen both, so, yikes, oh, okay. Well, uh, and Disney is here, Walt Disney. Yeah, you can, uh, you can always tell that Disney hates women. Uh, since I'm the only one here who actually has a mom, all right? Show of hands. Who here has a dead mom? <laughs> See? We get it, Disney. You know, you want women to be teenagers and then die <laughs> or, or disappear after they squeeze out a kid. And you know where, Disney, where, where the fuck is my ride at Disneyland, huh? Right? <laughs> right? I face a horde with nothing but fireworks. And then, what, some white bitch eats an apple, and then she gets two rides on two coasts. You know, like, what? come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice to see that the Magic Kingdom has a glass slipper and a glass ceiling. What else is new? Yeah. Oh. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, look. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be cocky. I'm just, just trying to be honest, you know. I have accomplished more than anyone on the stage and I did it with nothing, okay? 
Like, all of you had way better crews than I did, you know? Can you imagine what I would have accomplished if I had been paired with Tinkerbell? That girl's like a little mini, tiny white Beyonce. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, and, and, and the seven friggin' dwarves, too, you know? Like, I saw Lord of the Rings, you know, you have my axe. Like, those guys are awesome, I want one of those. Yeah. Oh, man, I'd even, uh, you know, I'd even take Orlando Bloom off of you, Jack. You know, at least he could bore my enemies to death. <laughs> but no, I had to go to war with Harvey Firestein, Donny Osmond, and Eddie Murphy's audition tape for Shrek Donkey. <laughs> that was it. Like, I'm a war hero, but who do I constantly get booted from Princess Breakfasts for? This stage of soft, weak women. <laughs> anyway, Ariel, honey, I know you've been a human for like a day, <laughs> but you've already set back women's rights for like a century. Can you <laughs> slow down, <laughs> right? And then, and then you got married <laughs> at 16, 16. I shouldn't be surprised though, you know? I mean, look at that empty face. Oh man. You know, poor thing though, I mean, she's got negative street smarts. <laughs> you don't even know what a street is, do you? It's, it's what you'd be sleeping on if you hadn't married a prince. That's what, that's what that is, <laughs> all right. And, and speaking of sleeping, Snow White is here, hello. Oh man, Snow White. <sighs> Every time I, I see you singing by that well, you know, I just want to push you down it. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you teach girls also great life lessons. You know, marry young. <laughs> Let boys kiss you while you're sleeping. <laughs> you know, at least Beauty thought she'd get in one of those uh, interracial couples, right? Yeah. Or at least as close to that as Disney will go. Um, uh, kind of, right? Yeah. Yeah, but turns out that Beast was just cursed and got to be pretty and white in the end. Oh, surprise. <laughs> you know, Beast, it must be nice to be a minority when it helps you. <laughs> like, wow, it worked out for Emma Stone, right? <laughs> Aloha. You don't have to get married just because the furniture told you to, okay? I at least made an emperor bow to me before I got with a guy, okay? Like, at least, you know, put some fear into the chandelier, girl. Come on. Put Still, yeah, I, I wish you guys the best, and uh, I, I actually, I have a wedding gift uh, to honor you. Uh, I know, Belle, you're not into books anymore, uh, so I brought a movie. Um, it's called The Great Escape, okay? I think Belle could get something out of this, right? Like a plan. Run, bitch, let's go. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Oh boy, you let a woman fight in one war and they never shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> All right, put your hands together for this next roaster, but know that he thinks you're bringing Tinkerbell back to life. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Pan. <laughs> Get ready, because I'm about to gut you guys like codfish, but with jokes. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Ah, ah, ah! <laughs> okay, here we go. <sighs> hey, Snow White, your big red bow is so dumb. <laughs> Why is it so red? Did you get your period on it? Hey, Aladdin, you smell so bad. No wonder they call you a street rat. <laughs> I'd give you a bar of soap, but I'm using it to reattach my shadow. You don't have a shadow because you're from a godless country. <laughs> hey, Jack Sparrow, you're such a mean old pirate that you... Hang on, sorry. You're, you're, you're a mean old pirate. You're pa, 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 pirate. Yeah, okay, I'm good. I just need a second. You're a pirate, yep. <laughs> Yo, ho, 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 that's the life for you. Terrorizing little kids that are afraid to grow up. That makes you feel like a big man. <laughs> yeah, okay, Peter. <laughs> Peter. 
Peter Pan, you remember what your therapist told you. And then you remember that your therapist is three nine-year-olds in raccoon costumes that are balancing in a lab coat. Okay, Jack Sparrow, big old pirate man! <laughs> Look at me, I'm our big old pirate chip! Chasing after Peter Pan for no reason! Hunting down my friends with your pirate buddies! Just a big man getting big old boners from terrorizing children! <laughs> Shut up, Jack Sparrow! No one asked you! <laughs> yeah, you pirates, you pirates are all the same. You're all after one thing, capturing me, Peter Pan. <laughs> Like, my life is so great. <laughs> Do you know how long I've been 12 years old? 45 years! <laughs> 45 years. And thanks to you pirates, I've seen some shit the kids shouldn't have to see. <laughs> I've lived through five wars, two depressions, and three Ghostbusters. <laughs> you know what I haven't done? Turn 13. <laughs> You're good. Happy thoughts. Oh, happy thoughts. Hang on. Just... Okay! <laughs> I can fly, motherfuckers! I'm back! <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Mulan, I'd like to give you a kiss. Just let me reach into my pocket. <laughs> yeah, kiss this! <laughs> hey, Ariel, you don't have a mom! <laughs> I don't have a mom either. I gotcha. <laughs> I don't even remember what she looks like to miss her, you know? Just, I wish I could go back to that pram that day and just stay put. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, yeah, look in the mirror, Peter. You, you pirated your own childhood. <laughs> well, well done, well done. Jack Sparrow! This ain't a game to me, bitch, okay? <laughs> it's not a game to us, okay? Lost boys for life, motherfucker, okay? I... I watched Rufio's soul leave his eyes while he died in my arms. You ever watch someone die in front of you? I, I, I have <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> She wasn't the first Wendy lady, you know? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> first Wendy, pirates. Second Wendy, pirates. Third and fourth, jet engines. And that's on me, okay? That one's, <laughs> that's on me. But it doesn't change shit, okay? You know? Because then there's Pockets, he's on you. And Cubby, he's on you. <laughs> one of your cannonballs took his head clear off. Little teddy bear head just, <laughs> boop, goodbye. I have not seen that much blood since my dumps the first time I ate Neverland berries. <laughs> hey, fun fact, you know there's no food on this goddamn island? We have to eat imaginary food. We have to. Everything here is poison. <laughs> Everything on this island is poison. Yeah, I wish I could fly three stars to the right and straight onto like a McDonald's or like a Popeye's chicken, but I don't have money because Neverland doesn't have an economy. Just pirates, like infinite fucking pirates, do you understand? You know, Aladdin, if I had a wish granting lamp, just one wish, and that's one last adventure, because to die would be an awfully great adventure. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Peter, stick to the cards, stick to the rest. Oh, we'll do this. What do you call a beast in a committed relationship? Spade! <laughs> I'm back, you guys! <laughs> That guy needs to get laid. <laughs> Our next roaster is a broad with the greatest pair of legs and no idea what to do with them. <laughs> Give it up for the Little Mermaid. <laughs> of my father, King Triton. You're both stern, you both have beautiful daughters, and you both hate Puerto Ricans. I don't know. <laughs> Gaston is such a great host, isn't he? And so friendly. 
you know, backstage, he asked me if the carpets match the drapes. And I was like, what's a carpet? I'm a teenage fish. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's like a carpet waffle, though. That's a C term for when a bunch of carp get together to have sex. It's disgusting, but you can't look away. Just like Gaston. <laughs> How could you let him get away anyway? I mean, if I hadn't married a guy I didn't know at the age of 16, I'd be so into him. <laughs> I should probably let you know, though, I have crabs. Well, just one crab. He's, uh, he's Jamaican and very protective. <laughs> Hi, Peter Pan. I've heard so much about you from the mermaids at Neverland. I mean, it must be so lucky to feel like a cocky child and never have to grow up. I mean, I've only been here a few weeks, and I think you've inspired an entire generation of Gastons. <laughs> nice to meet you, Aladdin. Um, I heard you have a flying carpet. And there's that word again, carpet. Well, anyway, I hope your flying carpet matches your flying drapes. <laughs> you know, Aladdin and I both became royalty recently, just like sisters. And you know, you may be a lying thief who conned your way into ruling thousands of people, but I just know you're gonna make Agrabah great again. Mulan is here. I feel like I really understand Mulan. You know, she left her family to go risk her life fighting the Huns. And like, I totally relate because one time I had everything. But then I got sad and then I did nothing and then I got even more stuff. Sisters! <laughs> Snow White, you have an amazing voice. I know a squid who would kill for it. You could do what I did, sign a contract and sell your voice, and then when you want it back, have your husband stab her in the chest with a boat. <laughs> it's really cool to meet you, Jack Sparrow. You know, he smells just like home to me. <laughs> but be careful when you're sailing your ship around my thingamabobs and who's it's and what's it's, Jack, because it's a pile of garbage the size of a Texas. I'm what you call a hoarder. <laughs> You know, when Beauty and the Beast invited me to this roast, all I could think was, what's a roast? And then I got distracted with thoughts about like forks and stuff. <laughs> so instead of roasting you guys, I'm just gonna give you two some advice for my wedding night. Let me walk you through it. Prince Eric wanted to see my clamor, which seemed weird at first, but I've only been here for like a week, so what do I know? I'm just a little fish girl. <laughs> but then he wanted to put his sporkle in it and jam it around in there until his thingamabob went glibblescorb. Yeah, glibblescorb. But not always into my clamor. Not always in there. Sometimes onto my donkle flompers or even on my lower back tattoo. <laughs> The main thing to remember, though, is that you don't get to glipple score because you're a woman, which I don't really think is fair, but I found a way around it. So, you wait until he's asleep, then you find yourself a little Libby Hummer, or like a Noobled Dork, or something like with a good bulb, like a banded fluke, and then you go to town on yourself. <laughs> That's all the advice I have now for the beautiful new Weds, but I'm still learning something new every day. After the show, Gaston said he's gonna take me out for something called analingus, which I think is some kind of pastry. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Oh wow, charming girl. Somebody take that voice away again, please. <laughs> Our next roaster, our next roaster, this is a big one, has come straight from a secret cryogenic lab hidden underneath the Matterhorn. It's all the way back from 1966. I'm talking about the Big D himself, Mr. Walt Disney. <laughs> Since I'm unfrozen, it can only mean one thing. They finally found the cure to mustache cancer. Hooray! Mmm. Chim chim churi, that's a good fag. Now, I've been catching up on some of the decisions my company has made, and one of you goofs really screwed the pooch. Superheroes? Star Wars? Muppets? 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 
Who are we catering to? Geek brain dewdroppers and Waldos? We all know those squids won't breed. Who cares what they like? We should be putting our resources towards the real money maker nuclear families. One man, one woman, 2.5 kids, and a dog named Davy Crockett. That's where our bread is buttered, not in Marvel picture books or di Divers, Div Diver City. <laughs> Diver City sounds like something you get after you eat too much liver and onions. No, thank you. <laughs> and some of these new animated pictures you're putting my name on, I I'm told you're making them with, with, with computers? My God, those things are as big as a house. <laughs> Why? Why waste that space when you can have 50 hidden Mickeys slaving over paper in sweatshop conditions? Side note, people think they've found all of Disneyland's hidden Mickeys, but they'll never find every last Irish slave of mine. <laughs> Why, some of them are buried right in the walls. You can see them river dance in the haunted mansion. That. You know, that is how you get the real cherry animation, breaking the pride of white immigrants. Work them so hard they have to hide some weird sex stuff in the frames just to blow off some steam. My God, look what I did. You know, Snow White, do you remember those days? You know, a lot of people say it started with the mouse, but in my heart, it started with you. You always remember the first intellectual property you stole. Eat cake, Brothers Grimm! <laughs> you are the perfect woman. But let's talk about the perfect man, Gaston, huh? Main Street, USA, you. You are exquisite. You put the men in specimen. Excellent breeding stock. If I have to go back into the vault, I'm taking you with me. Always take a good pair of kidneys along with you. That's why I used to keep Roy around. <laughs> And then there's um, Aladdin. You're one of the uh, later additions to my pantheon, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> in my day, we wouldn't make movies about people east of the Mediterranean, no, sir. Our main characters would have skin as snow as white. <laughs> well, I suppose your savage money is the same color as ours, so welcome to the family, short round. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, Ariel, Ariel, we, we, we haven't met yet. I, I'm, I'm your Uncle Walt. Um, but if I was your father, you wouldn't go outside like that, young lady. Cover up those budding barnacles of yours. Du -du -du. You, my dear, are in desperate need of a chaperone and a rib cage. Gaston! <laughs> I can count on you to keep an eye on this young lady, can't I? <laughs> v for victory! And Peter Pan, one of my most beloved creations. And by creation, of course, I mean something I stole. Suck eggs, J.M. Barry. <laughs> we made a wonderful movie together, but why in God's great green light would you make a sequel? When Walt Disney makes a movie, he makes it right the first time. I, I can't believe someone made a sequel to Cinderella or The Rescuers, Rescuers Down Under. That's downright pornographic. <laughs> and it takes place in Australia. Why, why, that's an entire continent of white Aladdins. You're, you're diluting the bloodline, not on my watch. I'm, I'm collecting every copy of Jungle Book 2 and I'm throwing it in the ovens with the other trash. Oh. Calm down, calm down, I'm just talking about Jews. <laughs> of course I have ovens. They're under Space Mountain and they're powered by children's laughter. <laughs> Mulan, we have got your resume. It's impressive that you typed it all on a single grain of rice. You, um, you seem like a very hard-working woman, but we just, uh, we don't have a place for you right now. We're not going in that direction. We're going lighter, but is ping around. Now that's a strapping young man I'd offer a job to on the spot. We need good, strong male go-getters like him. He will make a white executive a fine manservant one day. <laughs> Jack Sparrow. You're a new one to me. Uh, it's nice to see I'm not the only hundred-year-old corpse that got thawed out here tonight. <laughs> I'm not sure why anyone would take my wholesome pirate's ride and turn it into a rock and roll movie. 
You say the word rum multiple times. In my day, we made more family-friendly pictures, like Song of the South. Mm, you know. I can still close my eyes and taste Uncle Remus's bindle cakes. <sighs> Better, whiter days. And then there is Belle and the Beast. Now apparently, the two of you almost nabbed me an Oscar, so I'm willing to forgive the whole bestiality spitting in the eye of God thing. <laughs> I guess you can't be choosy when you rip off every fairy tale that hits print. Take that, whoever originally wrote your story. <laughs> Belle, you, you just need a good, a nice boy who shares more of your interests, like Gaston. Now the two of you would make beautiful human children. <sighs> The truth is, I never made movies about true love. I focused on something far more realistic for kids to aspire to, becoming part of a monarchy. <laughs> Best form of government there is, monarchy. That's why it's called Disneyland and not Poland. <laughs> mm. All right, all right. If I start to go in on the Polak jokes, I'll be here all week. I <laughs> I'm off to grab a whiskey with Captain America and get acclimated to modern society. I I hear your, your telephones can access any information in human society, and yet you use them to watch cat movies while you poop. What a strange world. See you next time. And the weirdest one up here is the one wearing a suit. Who would have known? Okay, it's about time we let our gracious hosts respond and do it quickly. I have to go home and tie a belt around my neck for reasons you probably didn't think of as a kid. <laughs> Please welcome Belle and the Beast. Thanks. Uh, before I start, I just want to say a big thanks to the witch that cursed me as an 11 year old boy. Yeah, do the math, okay? A 10 year curse ends on my 21st birthday. You think, oh, might have been a little harsh to deform a child before his balls dropped? Just take it easy, Adam. Yeah, sorry, babe. I mean, wait, is that my name? Because no one has ever said that before. Ah, oh, that's cool. Okay, well, guys, guess what? We've been taking your shit all night. Now it's your turn. All right, strap on. Oh, yeah, because you a-holes gave us a hard time because he's happy and I'm a furry. So what if we like to yiff and scritch? Look it up, Urban Dictionary. Yeah. And guess what? We make the chairs watch. It's our fetish. Yeah, and they're into it. Uh. Sometimes they let us do it on them. Yeah. And it's not like they can say no, because they don't have mouths. If they did, God, they would never stop screaming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mulan, you know, you're not exactly kink-free, OK, uh -huh. girl? You have to wear your father's armor just to start your fireworks. Boo! An hour after you eat your boss's egg roll, you are hungry again! Uh-huh. Your vagina is like the Great Wall of China. Long, wide, and no man wants to breach it up oh, high, Oh, baby, you did yeah. it! Oh, look who's back there, Peter Pan. Hey, you are into some weird stuff, too. How often does that thimble move work? Do the girls know when you give it to them you've already placed it on your dick? Like a little top hat? Yeah! Woo! It's funny, that's my man! <laughs> Can we buy some pixie dust off of you, Peter? You know, because I like to sprinkle it on my Hitachi magic wand when Beast is out drinking wolf blood. Oh, yeah. Side note, Hitachi was our chef for a very long time. <laughs> a good chef, a better dildo. And I got to be honest, he looked out down there. Mm -hmm. And I am OK with it. Yeah, because my baby just wants to see me come. Uh-huh. That's a man. Suck it. <laughs> Hey, I love you. when it comes to Captain Jack Sparrow, it's not what he's into, it's what he's not into. Am I right? Oh, yeah, pal, you would stick your dick in a conch shell if you were sober enough to hold it steady. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's mad he didn't think of that first. <laughs> I wonder how many girls have sent his potential babies down 
to Davy Jones' locker. Ooh. That man will sink to any depths. Yeah. It's a fucking pun, motherfucker! Yeah. That dude's balls look like the side of the Black Pearl. Oh, uh, your balls look like a fucking rabbit's foot. Yeah, you want to rub it for good luck? Yeah, get in oh. there. Oh. Yeah. 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 Hey, Aladdin is here. Uh-huh. And you know what? Aladdin always makes me want to break out into song. Lose that vest, lose lose that that vest. vest. There's no nips on your breast. Please just find a shirt with buttons, Al, and cover your weird chest. chest. Boom! Super weird. Where are his nipples? (laughs) Aladdin, you only seem to get off on stealing identities. You're no Arabian prince. You're a Nigerian one. Oh, hey, uh, here we go. Uh, Hi, you know, I'm not sure why you think a woman should fall in love with a creature like me. I mean, look in the goddamn mirror. You're a fish centaur, bitch! True. (laughs) And our love is true. You just saw a cute white dude and wrote about it in your dive journal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by the way, we're definitely on your dad's side in the grand scheme of things. Your infatuation with that guy almost lost Atlantis to a sassy octopus. (sighs) But daddy! Daddy, I love him! He (laughs) understands my deepest floor goals! That's my impression of you, and it was fucking awesome, okay? Here's a land word you should get familiar with. Statutory. Oh, shit! (laughs) Suck it! Oh. By the way, I know a good lawyer if you need one. He's uh, also a shoe. Mm -hmm. He's a loafer. He's a Jewish loafer. The only reason any of us have such a fucked up idea of romance is because of you, Mr. Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. Disney has been playing damage control on our fucked up ideals for decades. I mean, does it really matter if these girls have strong personalities, if their end games are all barefoot and pregnant? That's my man. People say Barbie hurts girls' self-esteem, but at least Barbie got to be president. Mm And of course I'm gonna fall in love with an animal. I mean, can you blame me? It's because of you that furries are even a thing. Oh my God, Robin Hood, Zootopia. Hell, no wonder 90s kids are so screwed up. Simba was voiced by Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh, I love me some JTT. Little bit too, little bit here too. We should call him again and do that threesome. Oh my God. in there. Hey, Walt. Sexuality is confusing enough as it is. Can you stop throwing wrenches in there? Yeah, okay. If Walt Disney is turning kids into furries, then Snow White is doing her part for necrophiliacs. Am I right, guys? I mean, at least the first time we kissed, we were both awake. Oh, shit! Uh, I mean, I was on Molly. I was on so much Molly. (laughs) But Snow White, listen, honey. You're an airhead, okay? Mm -hmm. You talk to animals and you spend your entire day waiting for something to happen. You're not a princess, you're a millennial, am I right? (laughs) Which leaves us with Gaston. The only reason you want to marry me is because you are in desperate need of a beard. Oh, hey, I give you a beard every time I squat on your face, (laughs) which is a lot. Yeah, he does it like 12 times a day, you guys. Hey, Gaston. We just want you to know, no hard feelings, Mm -hmm. which is also what you're never going to get from me. Yeah, it takes a real manimal to please her. Mm -hmm. When he went down on me the first time, I orgasmed so hard, I looked like Beast when he transformed into a human. Oh, it was... No, it was sweet. Lightning shot out of her fucking eyes and stuff. Yeah. He lapped me harder than when he drinks water out of the water bowl. Oh, I bent her backwards like my weird wolf legs. Yeah, I howled harder than those wolves he murdered for me. Mm. Oh. I read every inch of her body like Belle reads a library book. More than once, and I don't pay for it. Oh, God, when we were finished, my pussy smelled worse than the West Wing. <laughs> By the way, the West Wing is what I call my ass. Mm-hmm. And like the real West Wing, Belle is the only one I let go in there. Yeah. 
Oh, you grind my gears like Cogsworth. Oh, you get me hotter than Lumiere when I hide them under my danglers. Oh, you put hot tea into my chipped cup like Mrs. Potts and her weird little son. Now kick me in the balls like a jar! Alright, kids, I'm gonna stay here and see if they need a third. Uh, but you go ahead and get moving. Uh, that's our show, everybody. Good night. Yeah.